Hi, uh, what's going on? It's uh, John and Mike from Brew-Dudes.com. I'd like to do a video talking about what to do when your bottle conditioned beer doesn't carbonate in its bottle. Keg. Or keg. No. No? If it doesn't carbonate, you should be Oh, you should just keg it. I get it now. Yeah, that's right, but uh, I just haven't pulled the trigger on that. Yeah. So if you're still in the dark ages like me, and you brew, you know, a pretty high gravity beer and you really expect that after not only it working through, you know, uh, so much sugar and, and bring it down and probably, you know, ending up to be about 10% alcohol and then because you're uh, distracted or you just think it's a good idea you have a condition on itself for a couple of months you bottle it up, put some priming sugar <laughs> into the bottling bucket, you bottle up, you think it's gonna, hey, you know, it's gonna carbonate, no big deal, the, the yeast aren't tired or anything um, and then you open up a bottle and you know you get a very small fizz uh, and then you pour it and it's it's flat and even though the style it's a brag it uh, you know the, there's plenty of still meads this is not what I really anticipated I really wanted something that was uh, a little more um, effervescent uh, had a little more bubbles to it because I think it would be uh, a whole different experience if it had carbonation to it so uh, <laughs> not really know what I was doing, uh, I decided that I was going to inoculate some bottles um, with some yeast. Uh, knowing that I had already put some priming sugar in there, so there is sugar for the yeast to uh, consume, um, it was really just uh, a matter of uh, in introducing a new yeast strain to the bottles that I think would consume the yeast and make things that we like, which is carbon dioxide and alcohol, to each bottle. Now, when it came to measuring, and yeast strains, I, you know, I sort of did my best and made some good guesses. Uh, I got a clean, dry champagne yeast. I thought it could handle the 10% plus uh, APV. Um, and also, when it came to actually measuring it, you know, drinking a lot of Sierra Nevada, you see, you know, sometimes on the bottom, a, a nice light dusting. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, what could that be? So I had a syringe that comes with children's cold medicines because kids don't really dig the spoon they don't like taking their medicine so you get these you know it's it's very easy to measure out the exact dosage you stick it in their mouth <laughs> you send the dosage right down their throat and then they feel better and you know you don't have all this you know maybe that's just the way I look at it <laughs> but hey, it makes them better and I don't have to deal with the the crying and the, the carrying on for it I guess I'm a bad parent I don't know I get it done um, so, but I was able to measure out a, a millimeter, uh, sorry, a milliliter, sorry, a milliliter of, uh, of a, I uh, took the uh, dry champagne yeast, I proofed it, and just drew off a milliliter for each bottle, plucked it in, recapped it, and then put it somewhere warm. No bottle bombs yet, it's been about a week. Um, I've been looking and seeing if there's any kind of settling of that yeast, it seems like it has come from you know where I put it in, and it's kind of made its way down to the bottom. So you're taking a milliliter out of a wet labs? No, 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 what, no. What was it? You rehydrate? Yeah, you say rehydrate oh, okay. from a dry package? Okay, cool. And like a cup of water? Yeah, in a cup. Uh, yeah, about uh, probably cool. it was like a half cup. Uh, just warmed it. Uh, I had it boil and let it come down to what the package said between 105, 109 Fahrenheit, and then proofed it. Let it sit there for 15 minutes. You know, cool. it started to react a bit and then just took as, as much as I could you know so, some of the foam and then some of just the liquid underneath yeah. and plonk that into the, the bottles. Cool. So we'll see I don't know um, I think the I documented the whole thing and I was going to if, uh, if it was successful I was going to post it if not then I'd say don't do this this is a stupid idea. You know? Did you do all the bottles? I did a, a some. I didn't okay do all cool. Of them. Yeah. So there'll be a control yes. set that just goes maybe it'll Maybe it'll carbonate. I don't think so. Well, it'll be cool. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll cool. have a diff different. Uh, we'll have something to compare it to. Um, but if it does work, then I'll probably go and do it for the other bottles. How long have the bottles been sitting anyway? Oh boy. Um, I think we brewed that up in January. It was probably bottled in March, um, and then oh, wow. and then moved it to a warm place in the summertime just to, just to see if I could kick start it because it was you know it was in the basement so it was probably 60 degrees mm. for a long time um, but yeah it was that two that you know sort of two um, two months of aging maybe six sure. weeks of aging that huh. probably just Cause I was it's interesting because I was just reading on a forum recently there someone was asking questions about a barley wine 
that hadn't carbonated yet, and they hadn't re-spiked at all. And a lot of people on there were just, on this particular forum, were saying, oh, it probably might just take a long time to carbonate, just give it time, give it time. So it'll be interesting to see if yeah. the other ones come, yeah. come up. if they come you know? around, yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe in a, in a year's time. <laughs> they don't want to wait that long. I don't. I want, I want to taste some bragging. I want to have something for this fall. That's yeah. really what I, I had imagined as I was brewing it back in the winter time. That we get through the spring, we get through the summer, and then we'd have a nice fall time. Yeah. You know, especially with this Doppelbach. It's I gonna was going to say I want a little Doppelbach, a little brag. It. Yeah. Yeah. And see how it goes. So rake some leaves. Rake some. Yeah. After raking leaves, oh. you do that first. Oh. You know. Okay. So. Um, so anyway, that's that's that. Uh, do you have any other questions about it? I mean, <laughs> sounds good. I think it's really. You know, hey, it's bit, you, you, you gotta sometimes <laughs> you gotta just good. use your head and come up with the best shot. Yeah, I, I mean, mean if I, it works, it works. Everything was you know clean and sanitized. You know all the equipment and the surfaces that I was using and the bottle caps and you know I tried to keep it as clean as possible, but you never know. I don't know. Um, I just hope that the the champagne use does its thing. And it doesn't over carbonate too. The, yeah. the other thing I'm afraid of is I put too much in and it's gonna blow up in my face. Yeah. yeah. But you know, hey, it's been nice knowing you guys. You know, I'm the kid, the guy who I, takes the medicine. Just I, I hope the ten percent holds it back a little bit. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Champagne will go higher than that, but sure. But there, you, it's not that much sugar in there. I bet you. No, it was only enough to prime a bottle. And what was your final gravity before you? Were... It was somewhere in the teens, I have oh, to you? say. Yeah. It was like, oh, cool. but we started off at like in the yeah in the 10, 90s. Yeah. So we'll see. Anyway, that's that. That's that's my yeast Can't inoculation story. We'll Can't see. We'll try it. We'll try it out, and uh, we'll see if it actually did what it was supposed to do. Um, but uh, you know, we'll have to wait on that. So when it's ready, you know, stay tuned, and we'll I'll have a taste. So for us, John and Mike at BrewDashTudes.com, brew on, brew on.